think this time I want to talk a little bit about um, what it's like to be an artist uh, when you give up when you give up so much to do uh, something so frivolous. Uh, before I go into that, I kind of wanted to share a little bit about you know my specific stuff. So behind me is some of, are, are some of my pots. This one's one of my favorite ones here. This orchid one. Um, it's a tea set I like. This is a, a Shino type tea set. Uh, I have these collection of bottles here uh, that I made. Uh, and I like I like them. This is one of my favorite little bottles that I've managed to come put together here. Um, I also like making these little figures uh, when I'm bored. That's a cone pack. You gotta put these are cone. This is how you measure temperature in a kiln. Uh, I don't know if you can see. Let's see. That says you probably can't see, but that says cone 11 on there. Maybe in the light like that. 10, 9. So this particular cone, for some reason. When I look at it, 10 should be bent more than it is, but I think 9 stuck to it and caused a problem. But 11 here is bent almost all the way over. So this, this got to cone 11 is what that means, which is a temperature measurement, sort of. What I want to talk about is um, being an artist. Now, I don't make a, a living at it, so it's, um, you know, it's not exactly, maybe I'm not qualified to talk about it. You know, I don't want to sound conceited, but I have talents in many, many areas. You know, I could have been any number of things. I could have been a lawyer. I could have been, uh, geez, you know, I don't know, architect is what my personality profile says, a graphic designer. Could have gone into film a little more heavily and I could have, you know, struggled and, and gone to Hollywood and made it. Uh, I have no doubt in my own abilities uh, to, to pull off whatever I want to accomplish, you know. Um, so why art? Why did I choose pottery? Of all things. Uh, and I wrestled with that question. Well, I fell in love with it and it sort of grabbed hold of me and um, had a passion for the first time in my life, and that's what I think I'm going to do, you know. Uh, anyway, so I went whole hog with it. I went and rented, rented a studio. Uh, we didn't have a lot of money. My wife is a medical student, or well, was a medical student at the time. So don't have much, you know. We're working off student loans. We have a house. Uh, didn't have a kid then, but, you know, it's, it's rough. So... We went into debt, basically credit card debt, and I did my pots. I made them and I learned, and I taught myself over the next couple of years. You know, when times get rough, when you're struggling over how you're going to pay your bills, when you're, when you want something like your car's crapping out and you just need to go get a new one but you can't afford it, uh, you really, I really start questioning what the hell I'm doing. You know, I could be making money, I could be working a normal job that, that everybody else works, and you know, everybody else in this world works. And here I am, basically, playing with mud. And, you know, it makes you question what you're doing. How relevant is it? How important is it? But, you know, when you find something that you love, you just feel compelled to do it uh, regardless. Regardless of the rationale behind it. But I guess what I wanted to talk about was a little bit of those rationale, those thoughts. I wanted to share my, uh, my thoughts, because I think other artists do the same thing. You know, what am I doing this for? What's the value of this? Is this socially valuable? Is this something that is going to make me remembered? Is this something worth doing? Uh, if you question and you, and, and you probe and you feel in your heart that yes it is, then why the hell isn't it selling? You know, if it's good work, if I feel like I'm doing good work and I feel like I'm pouring my heart and soul into the work, why can't I make any money out of it? it it's obviously not as valuable as Walmart as McDonald's, as television, I mean, you name it. There are so many more things in this, in this uh, culture that people spend their money on. So that is what's important to them, right? If art was important, I wouldn't be struggling. Are they all wrong? Are the masses wrong? You know, And maybe it's not selling because of something I'm doing wrong. Maybe I'm not representing myself properly. Maybe I'm not getting myself out there. Uh, maybe I'm in the wrong nation, or not nation, but region. Maybe I'm in the wrong nation. Hell, in Japan, uh, pottery is a little bit more fine art. It's a little bit more uh, highly regarded. You know, in, in this country, it's uh, there's a lot of big there's a big ignorance. It's not a lot of people that understand it. So it's hard. You know, and 
I think everybody will question that at some point, and I don't have any advice. I don't even know where I was going with this, because I'm still questioning it. Would it be better if I had a normal job and, and I quit this and I was never happy? I mean, I was hap happiest when I was at the wheel and I was in my studio. It's my space. It's my world. I don't think I recommend it for making a living. It's, it's pretty brutal. I mean, when you get down to it, if you want to make a living selling pots, you're going to have to throw a lot of pots, and you're going to have to figure out... I mean, ideally, you want to be an artist, so ideally you'd want to throw, like, vases or something and have them sell for 2000 a piece. There's a guy, uh, uh, his name's Brother Thomas, and if you haven't seen his work, you really should check it out. Uh, I had the privilege of living in the same town as he did for a while. Never met him, though, because he's a bit of a recluse. His pots are absolutely amazing. He works in porcelain, and he reproduces stuff from China and whatever, uh, those ancient glazes, and he's phenomenal. Now, his pots sell for twenty or $30,000. <laughs> a little excessive, in my opinion, but hard to say that it isn't worth it. Those pots are pretty unique, and he's a pretty unique guy. He's a pretty good artist. So you can either be one of them, but that's kind of like shooting for the NBA, you know? <laughs> Very few people make it. So the nitty-gritty, how you make a living, geez, you know, there's a lot of different ways to do it, a lot of different, every, for as many people as there are, there are solutions. This particular lady that I know, she has gone with wholesaling. Wholesaling is basically you make a bunch of pots for wholesale, but the, the kicker is you have to be able to make lots, and you have to make, uh, they're all the same, and you don't have a lot of room for flexibility, and you sell them for about half of what they're worth, and you don't make much money. What was once an art is now sort of a burden. Like, you might have enjoyed making that design one time, but now you've got to make it a hundred times every day. And what are you then? You're kind of a machine. Um, if you love it, that's cool. But it gets tiring. It gets, it gets daunting. And I've done training exercises where I throw a hundred of one shape. And that alone is rough, man. That's kind of not so fun. And when it ceases to be fun, I'm going to start really questioning it, because then what the hell are you doing? Every creative person who, every artist who starts making art questions at some point is what they're making beneficial somehow. Is it worth something? Uh, we all want our work to speak somehow to people, um, to connect with people in some way usually, although some, some don't. Uh, but art unfortunately has an ugly side and that's a business and it's a it's a for sale I mean you could be the most brilliant artist and you could be making just wonderful pieces but if they don't sell you can't support yourself you can't live that way you can't make art for art's sake and feed yourself so what happens is you start making things that you know will sell that still fit in your artistic freedom that still fit within the confines of your own personal voice and what you want to do but you always have that will it sell thing for me, with pottery, a specific example of this would be glazing. I might come up with a pot, say a bowl. I love a particular, a particular glaze. I have, well, I like chino glazes, for example, or um, I have a black glaze that I like. It's got a lot of depth, but you know what? It's black. And when you look at it, it's black. It doesn't look like much, but when you study it, when you get it out in the sun, oh, it's gorgeous. Does it sell? Hell no. It's black. Nobody wants black. What I want to do if I want to sell that bowl, i got to glaze it a rutile blue or some cobalt blue. Here, you want an example of cobalt blue here? Oh, <laughs> I'm in black and white. But I just want to get the message across that being an artist isn't maybe as romantic as it might sound. As, you know, oh, run away and live a life in beauty and art and la-di-da. It isn't quite like that. There are some harsh realities that you will soon face if you go ahead and do it full time. But there's a lot of wonderful rewards. Maybe I should talk about more of the rewards, but my camcorder is dying. So, uh, I guess until next time, uh, that's it for now. See you later.